polyfill fiber fill, pillow, batting, and foam products. Gamel Quilting Machine Company. With a quick hands-on test, you will discover why quilters choose Gamel. Quilting Arts Magazine. Techniques for art, quilting, and embellishments. Free Spirit Fabrics. Quilting fabrics with style. Come quilt with me. Turn your revolver instead of your template. Quilt Central. Celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. To begin our quilting program, we're going to start with what is probably the oldest technique, and that is hand quilting. And joining me is Helen Squire. Helen is with the American Quilter Society. And not only that, she's affectionately known as Dear Helen. She has just completed her book called Helen's Copy and Use Quilting Patterns. Welcome, Helen. Thank you, Donna, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Quilting is probably the most important part of a quilt, isn't it? It has to be done. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And uh, how long have you been, dear Helen? 20 years. I answered the column, questions on quilting. Um, and then I moved on to a few more years as Helen's Hints for the uh -huh. American Quilter magazine. That's great. It's amazing when you stop to think. We've known each other that long. That, that's the scary part about it. Well, what project did you bring for us today? I brought a um, wall quilt that's tone-on-tone -tone quilting, uh -huh. and it was the colors were selected to go with the wallpaper in the kitchen. Uh -huh. And I call it floral sampler. Uh -huh. And what was unique about it was that I was trying to use five different patterns uh -huh. and make a perfect corner for each of them. And, th and right. that's hard enough and to do for one. And we're actually using it as a cover on the table today, which kind of coordinates and pulls all of that decorating together. Right, and you get a chance to look at the stitching. Great. Uh, close Let's and show them how we do this. Now, you well, used a lot of patterns. I have this, five of them in this particular quilt, and I, what I laid this out for is to show you and our viewers that there are so, there's so much paperwork involved in doing right. this. You know, they think they own one pattern, or we have one we like, and we're going to do the whole quilt. No, no. you must pre-plan it. And that's what makes the difference between a good quilt and one that's not so good. Let me move this one away. What I have okay. today is a new pattern I'm working on, and uh -huh. it's called the Elegant Series. And what it means is that if you have a pattern that you like, and as long as you have three copies of it, okay. one of them being a reverse, uh -huh. if you cut those apart, yeah. and then staple them together so uh -huh. that you either attach them at one end or the other end, when you go to fold it, it folds perfectly. perfectly. Not only once, but I've colored mm -hmm. these out. It will make four different distinct <gasps> variations. Look at that. That's the same design, same. but depending on how you miter the edge, That's right. you get those different designs. You'd slide that along. Not only can you do it for a corner, which is my favorite, uh -huh. but you also can take one and by folding it straight across, you will get yes. the center of the quilt. That's okay. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, I never thought about this. That is so unique that you can do all of that. You know, and so often people kind of run their pattern all the way off the edge and then the other one comes down to it, and it never looks quite nice. Like you said earlier, you want to just take out the stitching and, and miter it, it over yes. a little bit. You must pre-plan your quilting. Uh -huh. Now, once you get the pattern that you like, uh -huh. you then need three copies and one of them has to be reversed. You're always going back right. to it because right. you do need a lot of copies to pre-plan the layout of the quilt. Great. Let me take that one here, put this off. Now, Whoa, the one over here that we were folding uh -huh. in the middle has then been used, and instead of the circle design that was coming, I've added a heart, because okay. a heart is one of your most popular patterns. Uh -huh. If you take four of them, and this is a miter, but you're not seeing it, it's right. not folded. If you put the four together, and then Start working on muslin. Okay. You'll and you, have you do my most of your patterns on muslin, right. don't you? I do because it's easier. It doesn't wrinkle and mm -hmm. uh, rip or anything. And it gives me that touchy feeling right. that I need for quilt. So this is that pattern traced off of it, and it's on muslin. And it's a more permanent. I mean, paper kind of frays and gets ripped. It gives you a, 
a permanent pattern to work from if you ever want to do the quilt again. Right, and that is the design of it, but of course you need to have more quilting on it. Right. So what I've done in this particular case is I've taken the pattern and mm -hmm. instead of setting it at 12, 3, right. 6, 9, the right. clocks, I've set it off-centered uh -huh. and added some grid lines to it. Now, right. grid lines cannot be photocopied because they'll distort. Right. So you really need to draw your own very accurately. Mm -hmm. Now, when I wanted to make this pattern smaller for our project that I wanted to quilt today, okay. I had to add, uh, re I reduced it down and then I added a half inch grid, grid instead line. Okay. of a three quarter. Mm -hmm. More quilting. Yes, more quilting, <laughs> but you like it, I know that. Right, so that's where I'm now ready. I've got my pattern mm -hmm. as accurate as I can make it. I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes I'll have to, and I, I'll try some paper. To see how it's going to lay right. out. Right, but that's only to get it together so you see, do you have enough quilting in the area? Now what are you going to do in the center area? Oh, well, you need something more. Okay. And you can add another pattern, uh -huh. or what you could do, because it's so popular nowadays, is do a photo transfer in okay. here. Mm -hmm. You can do red work, uh, perhaps um, some stitchery with mm -hmm. fancy threads. Mm -hmm. Now once you put that in, you would have to quilt around Some it. additional quilting, but it... But you want, your rule is six inches, is six that correct? Inches, that's Just right. about the hand space is there. how much can be left Good. on quilted. All so right. with that all shown to you, let all me right. skip let's, to some fabric. Let's look at that. And show you how I actually start doing my muslin. All right. Now I think we can lift up one of these corners. And you have a muslin underneath there with the drawings on it. Right. Is that correct? There okay. it is. And I am ready to start marking, and you might be able to see that. Oh, yes, you can. You can see the pencil lines there. Let me get that just mm -hmm. a tad. Right through there. Straighter. And I'm using a chalk pencil. Now, you might mm -hmm. say, why do I use a chalk pencil for here? Um, where I like to use a water erasable for mm -hmm. design purposes, because my quilts have a lot of quilting in it, right. it might evaporate or right. smudge off. Therefore, I use a chalk pencil. Okay. And I also use a chalk pencil in a matching color so that if I decide not to quilt, if I run out uh -huh. of time, I can then leave it there and it will eventually just brush off. Okay. So now, one of the wonderful things about doing a muslin is that I don't have to work with that little piece of paper mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. I know how big I need. Good. So one is a design element. Now we're talking marking. So I'm lining it up. There is a line. I can see through it very carefully. Mm -hmm. And there I am with my chalk mark coming along. And this will stay on while I'm quilting. And the trick is don't quilt through it. Quilt a little above it or below it because if you quilt through it, your thread will get dirty. Helen, do you always use a hoop when you're quilting? Yes, I do. The tighter a quilt is held in a frame, the easier it is to okay. quilt. And I also have one more trick as I bat up. I change the grain line. And for the front, I keep it on the straight grain, right. but I put my back piece on the cross grain. What a good idea. Why don't you go get ready to quilt, and we'll look forward to seeing that. Thank you. You know, there are so many different techniques that every quilter uses. We're going to go now and see a real expert doing some hand quilting. Everybody puts off quilting until someday in the future. A friend of mine made quilts all her life, and she kept saying, I'm going to finish quilting it before I die. Well, unfortunately, she died. But there was a mix-up, and instead of going to heaven, she went down below. Well, she got down there, and there's this room full of all of her quilts, all pressed, batted up, ready to quilt. She had quilting frames. She had everything she needed. She got herself comfortable in her favorite chair. And she took her thread, ready to start working. And she looked around and looked around, and she said, called Satan over, and she said, where's the needle? He said, that's the hell of it. So what we want is for you not to put off doing your quilting. Get started whenever it's convenient, because you can put it up and start it and stop it whenever you want. Now let me show you how I do my quilting. I do it with no knots starting, and I do it with no stops, knots ending. I take a length of thread, twice as long as you normally would do, and I start with my uniform stitches. And what you want to have is the size of the stitch equal to the space between. 
My hand underneath the frame is pushing up the fabric, ready for the needle to slide into. I'm taking two or three stitches, pulling my needle through, and then after I do that a couple of times, I pull the whole thread through. I'm leaving a longer tail, and that's because I'm going to re-thread it and quilt the other part of the design so there's no knot starting. Now, when I'm finished quilting, and I want to aim for an area that will have more quilting done to it later, I'm going to scoot off, and you scoot off by putting your needle only through the top and the batting, not through to the back. Take your needle, turn it around, pivot it. It's just as sharp on the other end. Pivot as much as necessary to get to where you want to start quilting again. And now you're ready to start. Now, with your other needle, or perhaps using the other end with threaded needle, you take care of the knot that's forming, and I could come in with perhaps another thread if you had run out, scoot again to where I needed to be, pick up where I left off, and I would be ready to start. And I would be starting and stopping with no knots at all. You'll enjoy your quilting. Now practice, I recommend Patricia Morris's book on perfecting the quilting stitch. Let's look at a couple of different kinds of quilting techniques that we do on the long arm. One thing we have done with this piece here is it is a reverse applique and I've already started it. You can see that underneath the top layer, I have a second layer of fabric. So when I sew in a design and cut away the top area, the second color shows up through. Then I wanted to show you a little bit about a laser light. Now laser lights are in lots of different kinds of machines and you can buy them and attach them to your machines now. And they help you to guide a pattern onto the fabric. This laser light I'm going to point this little laser light onto my pattern that's sitting here on my laser table. It's just a piece of plexiglass. It helps to steady the pattern. And I'm going to walk through this one because I want to show you a little bit more about the next technique, but I wanted you to see how this is done. Is if my laser light, if I guide that right along my little hand-drawn pattern and keep it as smooth as I can, and if my machine was running, it would actually be sewing the quilting pattern over here under the needle while I'm tracing this pattern with the laser light. And that's how we laser a pattern onto the fabric. And sometimes when I sew a pattern in, I want to draw and add another extra little piece because I don't think it's quite full enough looking. So that's what I have done here. And I wanted to show you how I got that little design on there. Now what I really want to show you today is some stitching on the long arm. And I'm sure you can do this with other types of machines, but it's much speedier with a long arm. We can put in so much more thread so much faster with this. Now I've brought up my bobbin thread, and I'm going to tack that down a little bit. And this is called jetting. And jetting is kind of a zigzag stitch. You zig in and out, it's fill in, it helps to thicken a line and give swing or motion to the thread line. So I'm going to do a little of that. I kind of zigzag small and then I jet out a long one once in a while and that's called jetting. And it kind of covers the edge of the thread. It also you can add shading with it if you learn to layer it a little bit. And it will cover the edge of that reverse applique if you didn't do a real good job trimming it or if you just want the thread look. And you can vary this a little bit. You can add black for accent. Now I'm going to do what they call cradle jetting. It's kind of a C-shaped pattern. And that gives kind of a spikier look to your work, very artsy look. You can kind of crisscross the ends. A lot of thread artists use that. And you can maybe see, now if I move the machine away a little bit, that this is the jetting where it, the thread strikes out in a long line. And this is the cradling here 
where they kind of, it looks like the rocker on a rocking chair. So this is a thread play idea and you should give it a try because it's wonderful with all the decorative threads, the variegated threads, the metallics. You can use it just a little bit to decorate the center of a flower or you can use it a whole lot in order to outline your whole piece of scroll work or add in curly cues or tendrils to fill in blank areas. Uh, we actually have put it in stars which give it a bursting effect or the plain old everyday sashing that's on your quilt. We can run a bursting effect from the junctions of those cross bars and different things in order to give motion to a quilt and sparkle to the center of flowers with the metallics. So if you have some sort of quilting machine where you can either drop the feed dogs so that you can get some free motion play to it or you have a long arm machine, I hope that you will give this particular thread technique a try. Our show today has been concentrating on quilting and one style of quilting we don't want to forget is crazy quilting. Joining me is Patricia Bolton, who is the Editor-in-Chief of Quilting Arts Magazine. Welcome, Patricia. Well, hello, Donna. Thanks so much for having me back, and I'm so glad that we're talking about crazy quilting. It's one of my favorite art forms, and it's a featured style in our, that's part of our magazine. That's great. Well, I know there was an interesting article here. Yes. This is a little history about crazy quilting? Yes, we quilting. like to, to give some historical context for crazy uh -huh. quilting, and Rosina Lippi, one of our editors, did a wonderful job with this and she talks about the history of the Victorian era in terms of crazy quilting and and the stories behind some of our crazy quilts and it's something that will be ongoing. Good. Well this was Isn't a magnificent stunning? quilt. It's beautiful and it's, it's it's so fun to to go through there and look at some of the motifs that are that are in there. Has crazy quilting changed much over the years? Or? I'd say that people have taken crazy quilting and just run with it. They have just run with it. All sorts of there's so many things that are available out today, you know, different kinds of beads, lamp work beads, and, and sizes and types of silk ribbon embroidery that, uh -huh. that people are doing on their quilts. It's just, it's just wonderful. It's a crazy piecing in and of itself, lends itself very much so to embellished quilting. And a lot of contemporary art quilters are using crazy quilting. Yeah. You had a couple that showed uh, the kind of a contemporary version in yes. there. Yes. Well, uh, what we do is we, in each issue, we, if they want to see a crazy piecing, they, we have some patterns available to them with some mm -hmm. stitches. And then you're absolutely right. We do have some more contemporary uh, pillows that have been crazy pieced and embellished. Uh-huh. Now, um, do they do these stitches by hand or do they do them by machine? Uh, they can do both. Most, I've noticed that many of our readers choose to do their embroidery by hand. They really enjoy working with the threads and manipulating uh -huh. all of the embellishments by hand, but we do have uh, people who do use machines for their embroidery and well, surface embellishments. And it almost seems like you can never have too much on the piece. No, no, <laughs> we call those people, we call them encrusters. Encrusters. Because what happens is they put so much on top of their quilt that you can't shake it out. It's completely stiff with the embellishments. Oh. So a lot of people ask that though, about when is enough enough, and it, it's really up to the artist. You know, I, I can remember, and I can't remember what page it was on, mm -hmm. but you had an interesting article about spider webs, and you see a lot of those oh, on Crazy yes, Quilts. Yes, yes. Well, there is some symbolism behind um, oh. the spider web. We go into some of that uh, in, a, in the article. It was actually in our first issue, which uh -huh. is featured Victoriana, and uh, they're whimsical in a way, and, and, and very fun to see on a quilt. So what's the intrigue, or what is it about well, spider webs? There, there are some different theories out there, uh -huh. but some say for good luck. Oh, that's yeah, that's interesting. Nice. Now I would have that surprises me, but uh, mm -hmm. it's nice to know when I find there one. There you go. On. Yes, you don't need to be scared of the the. You don't need to be arachnophobic. That's in right. order to enjoy <laughs> a spider on a quilt. That's great. Well, again, you've you've brought some interesting information, and and I just want to compliment you. The magazine you. is so beautifully done. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for joining us today. Yeah, nice being back. Thank you. How many times have you left your quilts unfinished just because you didn't have time to do the binding? Well, there are some great binding machines out there, and this is one of them. And I'm going to show you some of the neat little tricks you can do with this and how it works. This one has a binding attachment on it, but you can get other attachments for this machine. You can get cording feet, rufflers, you can drop the feed dogs and even run freehand. And this is such a good industrial machine that you can actually sew through many, many layers of denim, and it's just unhindered. Um, I'm going to show you today how to run a two-inch tape 
two inch tape comes um, on rolls and you can buy it in over a hundred different colors or you can hand cut your own strips to run through the folder and you can custom color your quilt that way. But these two inch tapes seem to be the favorite for all the quilters. I'm going to cut this at an angle to get it started into the feeder. I like to cut a long point on it. And they do have seams in them because they are bias cut. And the seams you have towards yourself. And I tuck that down into the feeder and has a little slot on it. If the point didn't come out where I can actually stick a pin in there and I can just run it down the slot. This one has a knee lifter on it, so I can raise the foot and I pull this at a right angle right towards the back. Now I want to show you another little trick too. I'm going to run out some binding. And this is really neat for you girls that do stained glass work. This is all finished, all the way around on both sides. And I can actually take this to my ironing board and press this so the seam is down and all the stitching is on the back and it becomes a piece of tape that you can top stitch, use for stems on flowers and run around colored applique pieces for stained glass and I really like that trick and because it is on the bias you can twist and turn it and steam it into the shape that you want. We also make handles for tote bags with that or spaghetti straps for dresses. Lots of neat and easy and quick things you can do to finish up edges or run hems in things that take you a long time. I've run hems on dust ruffles and everything else. But now I'm going to show you how to bind this. I have a square corner and I have a round corner. So I'm going to lift up the foot and I'm going to tuck this into the feeder and get it in there just right. And you could actually do a queen size or a king size quilt in 15 or 20 minutes when you get good with this. Pull a little loop out. When I get to the corner, I'll stop and I'll pull out about three quarters of an inch to an inch. That allows me a place to miter a corner, to tuck it down, where I can go back and I can either hand stitch it down into the mitered shape that I want or I can actually top stitch it with this machine by pulling the binding foot back just a little ways. So I'll go to the corner. This one has reverse on it too, so if I want to back stitch a little bit, I can. And I'm going to lift with my knee and I'm going to pull out enough so I can get a good miter on that corner and I'm going to turn my piece. I know it's hard to see, but really when you train somebody to do this, it probably only takes um, a couple of corners worth of practice and they're very expert at it. Okay, now I've already turned. I've left that little loop out so I can miter and I'm going to run right down the other side. I can go back. I can tuck that little corner in the way that I want to and trim off my threads and have a perfectly right angle corner. Now I'm going to run down and I'm going to go right around the edge just as fast as I can so you can see me go around the corner. You can see how slick and easy that is. right around there. Isn't that slick and easy? Wouldn't you just love to have one of these to finish up all those unfinished quilts? Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. I learned a lot about the hand quilting today. I sure wish I had more time to do that. What's your favorite type of quilting? Well, of course, the long arm quilting. I really love that. Well, you had some really good tips for us today, and I hope you felt so, too. Next time, we're going to be talking about wearable art. We're glad you joined us today, and we'll see you next time on Quilt Central.
funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Bernina of America, nothing sews like a Bernina, nothing. Fairfield, maker of polyfill fiber fill, pillow, batting, and foam products. Gamel Quilting Machine Company. With a quick hands-on test, you will discover why quilters choose Gamel. Quilting Arts Magazine. Techniques for art, quilting, and embellishments. Free Spirit Fabrics. Quilting fabrics with style. Come quilt with me. Turn your revolver instead of your template.